Hey there, I'm Chef Jake, and welcome to another wonderful, delicious, delectable episode of Jake's Kitchen, the famous YouTube show that doesn't actually exist, because nothing exists outside of our own mind. It's called solipsism. Look it up. Read a book. <laughs> but today we're not going to be reading. Instead, we're going to be making a delicious snap pea and mushroom ramen with soft boiled eggs. Now, that has about 570 calories per serving, for those of you that are counting those at home. The average person eats about 2,000 calories worth of food every single day. But Hafthor Bjornsson, also known as the Mountain, the famous character from the Game of Thrones TV show on HBO, well, he eats 10,000 calories a day. Now, why does he eat so much? Well, as you probably can tell, he's gigantic and strong. He was able to carry two refrigerators 20 meters. That is quite a lot. But we're not going to be carrying things. We're not going to be eating a lot of calories today. Instead, we're going to be cooking a delicious meal and talking about delectable dongs. Things that you can do online now, guys. If you live in America, the calorie you see on a food package is referred to as a kilo calorie in the rest of the world. Also, with mushrooms, a little fun chef tip. Fun chef tip, always wash them before you start cutting them, they're dirty. Anyway, a kilo calorie is also called a kcal, which is 1,000 calories. A calorie is a simple measure of energy stored in a system. A kilo calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water one degree Celsius. Now, the way nutritionists measure the amount of calories in food is simply by burning the food under a tank of water and measuring the resulting temperature. Another fun chef tip is when you're cutting things, keep your fingers like that with your middle finger in front with a knuckle and you can use it as a guide so you don't get your fingernails in your food. Now, calories and the energy they measure are important for our survival. Our bodies need that energy to move and think and most importantly, to play video games. One of the biggest energy hogs we as mammals have to deal with is our internal heat regulation. We keep our bodies at around 37 degrees Celsius and maintaining that heat takes a lot of energy. In fact, just sitting there right now watching this video, you are burning about a calorie a minute. Hence the title of this video. And boy, are you looking fit. Non-self-regulating animals like lizards and amphibians need less calories per day because they only need the energy for more active tasks like getting more food or escaping predators. You know, the normal stuff. XKCD has a great article on how many calories, or more specifically, how many humans a T-Rex would need to eat a day to keep rampaging in New York City. It came out to about 40,000 calories, spoiler alert, but still check out the article, which is only about half a fully grown adult. And we have a lot of energy stored in our little bodies. You're welcome, T-Rexes. Now that's pretty sweet, but what is sweet? There's the familiar five tastes, sweet, bitter, sour, salty, and savory, also known as umami. Now, each of these tastes seem to be used for a particular purpose. For example, sweetness detects energy-rich foods, and bitterness may have been a way to avoid mind and body-altering properties in substances, such as coffee and many traditional medicines. Keep cutting mushrooms, cutting mushrooms. Our natural negative reaction to bitter taste may be a defense against mind-altering substances getting in there and messing things up. But this diagram is actually a lie! This image of the tongue comes from a 1901 graphic describing the parts of the tongue with the densest proportion of taste buds. The fact is that you can taste anything on any part of the tongue, which is great because food is awesome. Isn't that right, food? But can you taste anything in any part of the world? This chart shows all sorts of foods and the flavor compounds they share. Now we're uh, dicing our green onions on an angle. <laughs> What's cool about this is that although we all share the same chemical perception of taste, cultures around the world have very different ways of pairing these compounds. For example, Western cultures like to mix foods with similar flavor chemicals, while East Asian cultures tend to avoid mixing similar compounds. Look at that. Oh, Jake, you're a, I don't know what you are, you're something. A great dong to help you make use of nearby compounds is MyFridgeFood.com. Enter the food you have in your refrigerator. You probably can't say there's a fridge over there. And it will give you all the dishes that can be made just using those ingredients. Just uh, making some ramen broth over here. Cooking is very cool. Food is great for making sure that our brains work and humans love using their big brains to come up with fun new ways to eat. But we may actually owe our big brains to ancient chefs. Now. Heating food breaks down a lot of the proteins and fibers that are found in meats and in vegetables, making it much easier for our bodies 
to absorb the nutrients within. When early humans discovered how to make fire, it allowed them to cook their food. This process destroys harmful bacteria and actually unlocks more calories from less food, which means less time eating and searching for said food, and then less time eating means more time thinking. The process of preparing food also gave a very central location for meals. Everyone sitting around the fire allows to share culture and talk, communicate, eventually leading to the civilizations that exist today. Get out. That's a fantastic film. Now that we've started sauteing our mushrooms, we're going to add the white bottoms of the scallion. You're gonna cook that for about two minutes until they're soft. Brothy. Cooking! So Michael, here's a fun little chef fact for you. When you're doing a cooking show, as I have been known to do, uh, sometimes you do things ahead of time. So these eggs, why don't you pick those up there? I already soft boiled them. You didn't hard boil. Not a hard boil. Soft boil. You do a soft boil for a ramen. So you get that nice runny yolk. Right. So I did that in advance. And you can do it in advance too. Keep it in your fridge for who knows how longs. Longs. Hmm. I don't know how longs. <laughs> uh, we just gotta wait for this water to boil. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you later. Yeah. So, bye. While I wait for this water to boil, if you've soft boiled your eggs, you wanna gently peel them. And it's very carefully. You gotta do it, or else the, the yolk will kinda run out and ruins the dish. So you gotta crack it ever so gently, just to get into the shell. And then there you go. Now we're good to, we're good to peel. Ooh, I can feel how soft, but I can feel the yolk inside of it. it kinda feels like holding life in my hands. This really is just me going insane. Boil! Five. Five, right? Oh, it goes up to six! I thought five was as high as it went! You've been trying to boil it on five? That's what I was told! You weren't here for the density ball shoot, were you? No. No, oh, that's when I learned everything. I feel like a density no ball, you know? Once this is done, it's gonna boil over. Let's put a lid on it, baby. Just a... Whoops! <laughs> well, you know, it all went out in one go. Where'd you get your... Your chef degree? <laughs> uh, chefonline.org. Remember seeing those PSAs as a kid? They were all about don't use paper towels, use yeah. a washcloth. We don't have one available at the moment. <clears throat> but we do have ramen flavored concrete. <laughs> Eric would be so happy. Oh yeah, he's always like, use a coaster! <laughs> Just wait till he sees this video. <laughs> okay. Eric built this concrete island. By he the way. did. And voila, we have two delicious bowls of spring pea and mushroom ramen with a soft boiled egg. Thank you for cooking with me and thank you to Blue Apron for sponsoring this episode. If you don't know what Blue Apron is, I've actually been using them since 2013. Here's the first recipe that I ever got from them. It's these three right here. And Blue Apron is fantastic, at least for someone like me, because they give you all the ingredients you need to make dinner. Then you just have to cook it like we just did and you're done. Now, they were nice enough to give the first 100 people who sign up with the link at the top of the description $50 off for their first weeks. I really like it. I don't have much time when I get home to, like, look for recipes and go to the grocery store, so this helps me out a lot, and I hope it helps you out, too. Hey, guys, let's, let's come on in here. Let's see if, this is, if, if, if I did a good job. I don't know. I've never cooked a meal in this office before. Here, take a, take a taste. There you go. Here, I'll bring, bring it closer to you. What I'm really curious about is how well I do with that egg. Yeah, how did I do with the egg? Oh, that's a good soft boil. Let me see if we can get that on the camera. I'm gonna move the camera now. Oh, that is a good soft boil. I'm really proud of myself for that. I've, I've never really been able to boil an egg properly before. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't know, I'm excited about it. How is mm. it? Yeah? Mm. Yes! I did it! Well, thank you all. Thank you to my friends and Michael Stevens, who is now in heaven. Now he's. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, to you. <laughs> thank you to you all for being here and enjoying whatever this was with me. Link to all the dongs and to Blue Apron down in the description below. Michael Stevens, wherever you are, we miss you. You were just here and then you scooted off into who knows the abyss, I guess. And as always, ready, guys? Thanks, Thanks for watching. watching.
that's Come what I want. Come on. Welcome to my net. Oh, he walked in front of the lens. Woo! Cooking show faux pas. Yeah. Look it up. Or don't do what we 